Good morning and welcome to Deliberately Creative. Guys, we are doing this fun mushroom. Actually, the mushroom might be a different one. This one came out of my imagination and the next one might do the same. Let's see what happens. Good morning and welcome guys. This, bah, this is Deliberately Creative and I am Stephanie to bring you into another day or your lunch break or your dinner break or your evening tea, whatever it is. If you're taking a break and doing something for yourself, you are helping your mental health. You are helping support the people around you by taking care of yourself. And that I think is the most important thing. Well, aside from getting to do creative stuff and playing with art materials and getting to visit with you, for me, that is part of my heart healthy, emotional growth and just thank you for being here. If you're new, make sure and click that subscribe button and the notification bell. I have links to all of the materials down below in the more information box. I am planning on using some core watercolors. These were tube watercolors that I put into a pan and then, and this is just a little, a little box from another set of watercolors. I put uh, the tube watercolors in, I did swatch them out. And these are Core, Q-O-R, watercolors by Golden. I have not done a lot with them. I did this little guy with it. <laughs> so good morning. Hello from Meso oh, Minnesota. Did you know that I saw Mesopotamia when, you when I was reading Minnesota? <laughs> it's early. I haven't been talking much this morning yet, and I haven't been reading much. I've been doing arty things and working on stuff on the desk. So good morning, Deanne, and thank you so much for that giggle that you just gave me. And uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, and I know we've got Florida, and oh, all sorts of people coming in. Thank you. And thank you for taking time to help yourself out with a fun art project. Now I want to get some color on my background very first thing. I'll dry it and then we'll draw the mushrooms in. And the reason why I want to do that is I want to have this soft glow of kind of a golden glow in the background. And I'm going to do one of those little mushrooms that has more of a red cap to it. I know they're poisonous. They're really to toadstools, but they're pretty. And, oh, now something I want you to see here is that if you reuse your tape, sometimes colors that are on your tape will come back into your paper. It's okay. It just adds a little bit of depth. Now, I'm going to use some of the quinacridone gold. And this really looks like a brown down here, but it's this gold color right there. And I'm going to put that right here, sort of doing a halo. I'm not being really specific. I'm putting the colors down kind of in a random way. Sometimes I will have more color in it and sometimes not as much. I just want to make sure that my halo is a little darker on the edges. I like this sort of mushroomy effect that it gives. From Wales and Australia and Massachusetts. Woo! Thank you guys for being here. And if you are working on another type of project, what type of project are you working on as you're listening to me do this. I do that all the time. I listen to other people and watch other people as I'm working on my own art when it's not, when it's not a live stream. All right. So now you see how I left a kind of a halo here in the middle. I'm going to take a touch of this Van Dyke Brown and I did not get my palette re-wet. This has been dried in the pans for a while. So you don't need a lot. Look at that. 
I just want to get a little bit of brown and maybe a touch of sap green. So this is the Van Dyke Brown and we'll put some sap green. So Sheila, you're in Washington. Excellent. And Nikki is in Southwest Florida. Wow. All right, and now I think I'm gonna grab just a touch of some sap green because mixing it with that Van Dyke Brown down here on the ground, look at that. Just makes it nice and earthy feeling. These little mushrooms, they're gonna be down, they're in the ground. It's a golden glow. I will show you a, a reference picture that I have in just a second. I wanna put a bit more of that brown deeper down here. And now, there, there might be a little bit more, whoa! Well, that was interesting. I don't have my pans attached, so I guess we're getting a little more brown up high. Big deal. <laughs> you know, I'm not too worried about it. Actually, it helps the halo effect. Working on your junk folio. Ooh, I have never actually done a junk journal or junk folio type of thing before. I've done collaging where I've used some things like that, but I've not actually done the junk journal. All right, so I'm going to dry this and just let you guys know, I am in a kind of mellow mood today. I did release three new dot journal books. Those are a dot grid. I'll have copies of them in a couple days probably next week sometime. I have um, three books that just came out. They have covers on them that are done with artwork that I did here on the live streams. I did one for the Raven, one for the Night Garden, which is the foxgloves at night, and the other one is the unicorn, the rainbow unicorn popsicle. It just makes me happy. <laughs> Working on a sunrise watercolor colored pencil for a... Fr oh, nice. See, that's the neat thing. Being able to work on your artwork and have, have a little companionship in your, in your studio. All right, so this is pretty much dry. I think I want to go ahead and get it drawn on though now. So I'm just, oh, this is a pencil pouch. It's in my Teespring store. I made this quite a while ago. And this is the, I think this is the small pouch. It's huge. I was really surprised. It has really strong zippers. They're made here in the United States because what they do is they print onto this uh, fabric and it's a polyester based fabric so it's nice and durable <laughs> I made hamburgers and fries it's yeah <laughs> what can I say now I have these mushrooms that I found let's go down to this pic this this one right here so I have these mushrooms that I found but I also found an image with this kind of soft golden, goldeny glow. That's kind of what I was going for. I might put a little bit more orangey tones down here in the, in the grass before I start drawing. I think I will. I'm taking the uh, Pyrrole Orange. Ooh. Just adding a little bit of that down here in a very abstracty kind of way. I'm just picking up the color, you see? And my brush is pretty dry now. And then I'm going to, whoa, I almost ended up with color in my, on my painting again, huh? I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with that, that brown, that Van Dyke brown real dark teddy bear type brown and put a little bit more of that down here. I just want to deepen up the tones just a bit. Watercolor dries lighter than you expect. So 
Pushing your contrast is always a good thing. So I'm going to simply draw in, not that mushroom. I'm going to go to my other mushrooms because I want... I want these guys that have kind of those skirts. So I did draw a sample of some mushrooms. So if you want to take a screenshot of that, that's kind of what I'm going for, but I think I'm only going to put two on because this isn't as wide. So there we go. All right. And you know, make sure that you are drawing lightly on your watercolor paper. If you want to draw straight with pen, you can. If you want to draw straight with pencil, you can. I sort of like the idea of drawing with the pencil first for this one, just so I can work out my composition. Now this mushroom it's going to be my bigger one. So what I did is I drew like a little baseball bat going down into the, into the leaves at the bottom. And then I drew a smile. That's sort of the underside of the mushroom. And now I'm kind of closing that off and we're going to come up. This is the rim of the mushroom. See, I've made lips now, haven't I? And then I'm going around the back. And I think I made that bounce up a little high. Hey there, George. I hope that you are doing well. Home again. Congratulations. I know we've had a lot of people in our community that have had some time in the hospital or still have time in the hospital, I want you to know that this is a time that will pass and things will get better. I'm excited that you're here today and spending your time with me. Now I'm going to put that little skirt on there. There's, they've got these lovely little skirt. I like that look. And then I'm not going to worry about drawing too much up here. I'm going to be putting this in with a pen. So I'm going to have the other little mushroom guy kind of leaning over this way just a bit, getting their little skirt on. And I think I'm actually going to see a little bit more underneath of this one. I kind of like it, like seeing the tipped over ones every once in a while, the head tipped back just a bit. So basically it's like a football shape with your stem coming up into it. And then you're just going to see an edge of the top, but it's all from the underside. How's that? So there we go. I am I'm getting distracted by the by the the chat. Now, I'm looking at this going, I think top of this mushroom is actually going to end up here. I'm going to make this one bigger. So when I put this in with pen, I can adjust Look at that. And I, you never know what I'm going to do. I think I want to see more of the top of that stem, a little bit of, a little bit more of the underside. All right. I'm going to put this in with pen because it's getting a little confusing. So here we go. I'm going to draw down here. And See what I did? I kind of put that top and the skirt in all in one go, didn't I? 
And now down here at the bottom, I'm not going to draw all the way across the bottom of those. You look in the reference up there, you've got some little grasses and things. So I don't want to draw on the bottom because there's leaves and such down here. I am going to say that the front of this kind of goes like this and comes around. Yeah. This is the underside. So this is the part where we'll be drawing in all of the gills. I'll just get a few of them in. I'm going to I'm going to take some time and actually draw these little guys in, but I want you to see at the back you're going to draw them curved and smaller. At the front they can be curving in or curving out. So curving in, they're curved, cupped in. <laughs> I don't know how other, uh, how else to describe that. Or curving where they're curved and coming outwards. So it looks like their shape going underneath. So have some that are going together, that are going in. And then make them curve out again. Look at that. So easy. One line at a time. When you're doing your doodling and your drawing, you're just putting things down one line at a time. Now I did give this a little bit more of a dome than what the than what the reference has. I'm changing it up. It's just giving me a place to start from. And by referencing a real photograph, I'm getting a place to start my doodle from. Have you ever noticed that if you have something that's already started, it's always easier to edit than it is to create. So, I look at the photograph and then I edit the photograph in my head as I'm drawing it on the paper. Let's see. I'm going to say that this one curves a little bit. I find if you let your hand wander and let your lines wobble a little bit, your mushrooms actually get more of a realistic look to them. So I'm not sure what's going to go on up here. Maybe I'll do something weird and tuck another mushroom coming, coming in. So it's like you just caught a part of the page or part of the image. What do you think? Should we do that? I feel like I started a little low or didn't make this go up high enough. Not sure. Now, if you have a kneaded eraser, and you want to erase your pencil lines, that is a good thing to do if you don't like to see pencil lines in your watercolors. Now this one, I am going to erase my pencil lines. I don't really need them in here. You see, by going in and putting that background though, we've got our mushroom already colored in, and all we'll do is put a little bit of a touch of a darker, reddish tone up here on the top. Pens and a rock painting. I think that's a good idea. You're doing it in combination with the Ahuhu pens. That's a, that's a clever idea. I just found a big Santorini stone that I've had for quite a while. Look how big this is. This is like five by eight. It's huge. I'm thinking about doing a project on this. You guys want to give me some suggestions? What kind of a project you would like to see me do on that big Santorini stone? I think it's going to be a watercolor project. I have some of the Daniel Smith absorbent ground that I can paint onto it. I'm just doodling this in and just taking, taking my time. You know, sometimes you need to just take your time See, and I can go up 
and back. And what that can do is give me a little bit of that. Let's zoom in a bit on that. You need to see that closer up. We're not doing the watercolor now, so let's, woo, <laughs> that was quick. Let's zoom, zoom, zoom. Sorry about the out of focus. Here we go. There we are. A garden scene on the rocks. Well, okay, what type of a garden scene? Are you talking about, you know, the whole garden? Are you, you know, so that would be a lot of small details? Or are you talking about an up close of a flower? Or maybe a frog's? Oh, I got some pictures of frogs actually sitting in flowers when we went up to the Olympic Peninsula. We stayed for one night at a place in Squim, Washington. It's a lavender farm. And they're members, they're uh, part of the Harvest Host. So when we were up there, we stayed for free on their lavender farm. And we got to walk all, all around the lavender farm. The There were still some flowers sitting on their, uh, on the plants. They have a, you know, cutting garden type thing set up. And there were ginormous snails climbing into hollyhocks flowers. There were really cute little Pacific tree frogs that were little green ones that were hanging out in some of the flowers in that same little garden. So if anybody's interested, now Harvest Toast is not, uh, is not sponsoring this video, <laughs> but I'm going to talk about them just because I love the opportunity to get out with my van, but not have to spend a lot of money. And actually, I don't really like going to you know, RV parks or, you know, those type of campgrounds. So, oh, did you see here? By putting these little going out, coming to a point, and then coming back, it makes it look even more like the gills. Ooh, I like that. See, I'm learning as I go along here, too. But the Harvest Host is really cool because you pay, you know, $79 for a year, and then you get an online list of farms and restaurants and oh my gosh just a whole bunch of different things that museums different types of attractions stores that have parking overnight parking for guests who are part of harvest host and it doesn't cost you anything to stay so when we went up to mount rainier last time we stayed in the parking lot of a restaurant. They actually had a little RV park up the hill. It's really cool. Garden gnome. <laughs> You're on the Kitsap Peninsula. Oh, cool. Close-ups, ladybug, butterfly, flower. Yeah, doodle work, of course. I like, I like the way you think, George. So, yeah, I enjoy them. I, the Harvest Toast, I think it's an awesome opportunity. It's actually, really, you do this so that you can support those smaller businesses and those businesses that don't get quite the, the number of customers, visitors. I'm going to put some little dots down here at the bottom. I know that this is, I'm taking it into my doodle world here. I'm still, I'm still paying attention to those bits of watercolor that, that are down below and thinking of them as leaves that are covering over the bottoms of the mushrooms. There you go. 
So do you guys get out and take your art materials with you when you when you go travel? I know that right now we're not all doing a lot of traveling and the traveling I'm doing is very, very socially distanced. I really only come into contact with my husband and well, you know, kind of have to be in contact with him. <laughs> All right, I need to remove those pencil lines so that I can see a little bit better. And you notice I'm just going in and erasing without even paying attention to the, that I just drew those pen lines down. I'm drawing with the Eco Pen. This is not sponsored either, but the Eco Pen, it is a cardboard tube. So you can throw this part away. You're not throwing away twice as much plastic. And then I'm saving a whole pile. I've got piles of these little tips now. I'm going to have to do some type of project with those. I think, let's see. I, I kind of, maybe I'll have, oh, I'm trying to think. What am I going to do back here? Maybe I'm just going to bring some of that orange up here. Maybe it's a pencil time. Maybe we've got a little branch that's kind of dropped down with some leaves on it. That are kind of curling up. Ooh, I kind of, I like that idea. Maybe I'll put some color in and then doodle around the leaves. What do you think? You know, little, little branch that just sort of came in, dropped down. That way I can have something up here. Ooh, that's pretty. And these are going to be brown and kind of wilted, you know, crunchy, crunchy type leaves. Always take something to draw on when you go, yeah, made your own doodle book for your purse. Excellent. That is wonderful. So if you came in after I started up the show here, I do have my doodle journal, my fun brand new dot journal books. Okay, we're going to we're going to take a little just a tiny look at that. I've got three new books. They're Harvest Your Thoughts, The Night Garden and Be Creative. These all have the dot journal pages so that they're the dot grids. <laughs> Pretty cool. What do you guys think? Oh, and I do still have my coloring book. And if you look at this, I tend to price my stuff really cheap. That coloring book really should be more like $15, but I want people to be able to relax and enjoy their time and not worry so much about the money right now. So the Fun Floral Mandalas book, that has 50 drawings in it to color. And then these are blank pages with just a light dot grid on them to make it nice and easy to color and draw. I made sure that the dot grid is really light and very once you've drawn on it, you really don't even notice it. That's how light it is. So I'm pretty excited. <laughs> so back to, back to, come on, pen, mouse, where are you? There you go. <laughs> back to the artwork. Yeah. 
You need that coloring book. Yeah, it's it's great. There's 50 floral mandalas. Oh, hey guys, I don't have a link for it right now, but the Art Sherpa coloring book that I did all of the artwork for has been released. And, oh, I'm going to have to go and grab that that link for her. Because, oh my gosh, my my coloring book, copies are on their way right now. So I'm really excited. I'm going to go. Artsherpa.com. Theartsherpa.com. And then click on the shop. Whoops. It'd be really good if I could learn how to type. Or maybe it's the... Maybe it's... I don't need to learn how to type so much as I need... So the Art Sherpa Coloring Book. Look at that, guys! The Art Sherpa Coloring Book! And these are some of the pieces of art. Just little, they just put a couple of them in. Look at my, the gnome Now that gnome is actually based on Cinnamon's gnome, but I have a whole bunch of my own gnomes that I'm doing late, lately. So pretty cool. The Art Sherpa Coloring Book. Uh, and they're selling it with free watercolor pencils. So $30 is the coloring book on watercolor paper and a box of watercolor pencils. I think it's the Creta Color watercolor pencils. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm so, so, so excited about that. So Whoops, I need to get I need to grab the journal and drop it in here. Copy the journal. How about grab the link? There we go. So the Art Sherpa coloring book has 25 designs that I drew that are all based in the world of the Art Sherpa. So there's girls and there's gnomes and there's trucks and there's more girls and yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I think we are going to put watercolor before we put, and I'm going to leave those pencil lines this time. I'm going to use that quinacridone gold again because, oh, that quinacridone gold is my favorite color. And so when you're painting, watch out for those beads of water. And if you're interested, I'm sorry, I never mentioned what brush this is. Let's lay that flat. This brush is the number 12 round mimic. It comes to a really nice point. So it's great to be able to paint with, get into some details. Because I already have color on here, I'm just going to sort of dab, dab, dab. I'm not being real specific. I'm going to go in and doodle those leaves on. I want a darker leaf down here. Just dab, 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 put it, putting a little bit more concentrated color in, maybe where it's going to be on the underside. Yeah, this really has kind of a 70s vibe. When can you purchase the Art Sherpa coloring book? Now. <laughs> if they have it for sale, it's available. Uh, if they have it listed as out of stock, then it's uh, not available right at the moment, but they are in the process. I just picked up some Van Dyke Brown, really quite thick to make my stem. I'm not worried about the paint getting being too wet or anything if it bleeds a little bit that's okay I think 
maybe I want to put a little bit of that in underneath. Some shadows. Ooh. So this is probably the most... I just covered up that white that I wanted to try and keep. Oh, well. This is probably the most watercolory watercolor I've done. That little bit right there. <laughs> yeah, it has quite a 70s vibe. I want to dry it and then do the pen. I think that makes it look much more like it's down in the down in the leaves. I like that. So yeah, I've been friends with Cinnamon, oh my gosh, for five years? Kind of an Asian influence. Yeah. Yeah, I like I like the way you think there, George. It is kind of Asian influence. I'm going to zoom out just a smidge so we can see it just a little bit better. All in one bit. You can see how my tape is all messy. It's protecting that lovely white edge all the way around. Oh, I forgot to put my the color for the top. I think I'm going to put some water in just on that edge. And I'm going to take some of that pyrrole orange. Pretty. Just, just a touch. I don't have a lot of. Don't have a lot of space there. And then maybe a bit of the cadmium red. I'm letting it sort of blur out. I'm leaving a few little bits of light color in there too. Am I worried if it blurs? No. If I got my water outside the lines? No, I'm not worried about that either. So if I were being really, really really specific about things. I would have, ooh, I think I'm going to do that. I'm taking a little bit of the color that's up here. There we go. I would have left those edges, the little white dots, but what I'll do is just go back in maybe with a little bit of the gouache. Hey there, Sandy! Great to see you. I am going to go ahead and grab just a touch of burnt cn. No, burnt umber. Burnt umber. Burnt umber is a little bit more dirty to me. It's a little more dirt like. Put a little bit of that burnt umber to make the shadows. Just a little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more, a little bit more. Whoa, that one got a little dark. Under the edge of that skirt, I'm going to push up some of that color. That one that got a little dark, I'm just smooshing that color around. Now this, I'm working on top of the Arteza. Ugh. It's the Arteza postcards that come in a tin of 30. Look at that. I did do a little tiny, uh, a little tiny recording of this one. It's going to be going up on my Tangi classes. And so is this one. This is a little pumpkin that is just a little one minute class with one watercolor pencil. Well, two, if you count the, the stem. Blue watercolor pencil and a little bit of pen. 
I started off doing this one, but it got too busy. I think I like today's much better. I also like the colors better. And then this one that I did last, last night as the inspiration for this one. Oh, cool. Lorianne, you entered an art contest on Paint My Photo? That, I love that painting. Oh, that is so neat. All right, I think maybe just a touch of the burnt umber right down here, close to the stem. Just darken up that shadow a tiny bit. I don't want to darken it too much, but I'm used, I'm using the paint really very, very dry. I'm like, okay. So when I'm touching the water here, I'm like barely, ah, I just barely touched, barely breaking the surface tension on the water. And then I'm just lightly, I'm not smooshing my brush down in tight or hard. I'm just lightly touching. So I can pick up just a bit. There we go. Sometimes less is really more. And even though watercolor dries lighter, I like that soft lightness. I'm going to blur that out so it's not such a hard line there. You know what guys? I don't know. Should I put the should I put the line work on the leaves or should I leave them and leave the mushrooms as the focus? I'm I really like how the pencil lines are sort of my little def, define defining lines. I know this is controversial with some people. I am going to put just a touch of splatter just because it gives texture and I'm using the quinacridone gold. Now I did put a bit of water down in there from the brush because I want it to be, I want to give it a little bit of texture down here on the, on the ground and maybe a little bit of that brown. And that was the Van Dyke Brown. You know, I'm, I'm really quite happy with how this is looking and I'm kind of, I'm going to put a little bit of that up there. I kind of don't want to put, yeah, I don't want to put the, I've decided that if I have to question if I want to do it or not, I probably don't. <laughs> so I'm going to dry this and we are going to pull the tape off and sign it. Oh my goodness, guys, 45 minutes. We've got a beautiful postcard. This is going to probably end up on the cover of a dot journal. <laughs> I am kind of addicted to making those now. Now that I have the inside block all figured out, I can do this size journal. And I can resize this picture because I'll take it at a big enough, big enough dots per, per inch, big enough resolution that I can resize it up and make it fit. And then I'm going to get that tape pulled off. Oh. Now this tape is probably hitting the end of its usefulness. If I had left this sit on here uh, and let it completely dry and cool, there wouldn't be any warping. 
These postcards are so awesome because they are 100% cotton paper. Okay, I'm going to go turn off that image. Well, I guess I can leave the, the watercolor out there so you guys can see it. So this is where I started from, and this is where we ended up. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I am so happy. Okay, I do need to sign it, and I'm just going to put my little... Because this does have that kind of oriental feel, I think I'm going to do my little, sort of my little chop, which basically is just my initials in a box. Oh, that's right. I was going to use a tiny bit of not that case. Where's the gouache? A tiny bit of the gouache. I just wanted to put a few little dots. A few dots? Well, and if all I want to do is a few dots, maybe I'll just use a white pen. I can use my Signo Uniball white pen. And give myself a few of the little white I'm not actually drawing the drawing the dots on. I'm just sort of letting the pen skip around. For that sort of flaky edge. That's all. Not a lot. I'm not doing a lot. <laughs> there we go. All right. Guys, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you hanging out and exploring your creativity, making sure that you're taking time for yourself, because when you do that, you're making yourself a better person and you're making it better for the people around you. <laughs> you know, the, I guess October is mental health month and it's time to take care of ourselves. Show yourself some care. Self-care is the best kind of care because it cares for everyone. Remember, do something creative. And I'll see you guys back here again on Monday, 8.30 a.m. At least at this time, it's 8.30 a.m. Monday. And it'll be another doodle ink drawing with some watercolor because that is really making me happy right now. Take care, guys, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>